This is Jeffrey. And we're the Donis Brothers. Uh, like we said, today we're talking about education and more importantly, taking that education and implementing it to take action and help you reach your real estate goals. So briefly, we'll kind of just touch on who we are. We invest in apartments. We used to wholesale houses. We used to flip houses. And now we help investors invest in large multifamily properties. Yeah. Yeah. And this is something that obviously uh, we didn't really have like a background. Our parents were never in real yeah. estate. So uh, we had to build our own network, but it started with finding, being very resourceful and finding great uh, ways to educate ourselves. Yep, a hundred percent. And so, starting out, for us, we were scared at first, of course. With new, all, most new things are scary, and mm-hmm. we were definitely fearful when we were first starting in in real estate and began investing in real estate. And so, I, my first point I want to touch on is how education helped us overcome that fear and how it sort of removed it and maybe didn't get rid of it completely but makes it more manageable so would you have, what, yeah what do you i think? mean crow and we always like to say a, a fear is a lack of education so yes. the more educated you can be on something or on any topic uh, the more likely that you'll understand it and therefore if you want to be successful at it then that'll increase your odds um so what we did <clears throat> and if we want to kind of go into exactly how we like approached the thing that yeah. was real estate we Obviously, I had no experience in it, so it was something that was very new. Um, but my brother Kenneth had been watching YouTube videos, uh, and yep. that, those are obviously free. So we kept seeing these certain individuals and these certain gurus, as a lot of the people are calling them. Um, and they all also have a lot of content on other platforms like podcasts, uh, books, yeah. stuff like that. So and we just were really sponges when it came to absorbing all the information. Absolutely. And, you know, at first, real estate was very daunting, and it seemed there were so many uh, aspects of it that – were complicated and we would never really understand. And once you start exposing yourself to it by listening to podcasts and reading books and things like that, I mean, you really get to kind of get a grasp for it and you also become more comfortable with mm-hmm. that topic. And then eventually you'll find yourself being able to speak that language. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so an interesting topic that I, I really would love to, you know, we actually haven't spoken about this, but how does education help you mitigate risk? I think it might seem like common sense for some people and for other people, it might not. So, yeah, I mean, for obvious reasons, uh, you don't know what you don't know. And I think it's like, you, you should be careful in certain scenarios. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you might learn that is by learning from someone else's experiences and someone else's failures. So how do you get access to that information by getting on podcasts, listening to podcasts, et cetera, and networking, things like that. And so absolutely, the more you know about something, the more you'll be able to kind of mitigate the impact of an obstacle that, that mm-hmm. comes up on the journey, things like that. You'll just, it won't be your first rodeo, or at least you'll understand how to react. Yeah. Um, you want to make educated decisions when you're exactly. uh, in, in this space. You just want to make sure that every single time that you're doing something, uh, you're looking at the, the possible downfalls as well as the possible reward. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how do you do that? You have to understand it, of course, and you have to educate yourself at first. And one of our favorite, uh, I I call him one of our mentors, not direct mentor, but we listen to a lot of his content, Robert Helms of The Real Estate Guys. We were at a seminar, and he was describing how education and being prepared, uh, he was talking specifically about the economy, but I mean, in general, this is applicable to any real estate investor. It's like you're in a car going very, very fast, and then there's a turn in the the road. Uh, You could either hit the road and... And just slam into the, the turn and completely you know demolish your car or you can hit there might be some siding that is softer and it'll kind of you know it'll still hurt and you'll bump off of it but you'll be able to kind of re- you know readjust and Keep going. get back on, on yeah. path not Which be totally is, exactly demolished. exactly and that's what that's what education allows you to do it allows you to not necessarily remove all risk but you can come back from it and you can be more prepared for it and it kind of protect it in a way mm-hmm. so Starting out for us, we can, I think the best way to approach this would be just to dive into how we learned and what books we read and podcasts we listened to. Uh, So first off, you've probably seen in the corner if you're you're watching this, but if not, Rich Dad Poor Dad was by all, you know, by far our favorite book. It has the foundation to financial literacy. It exposed us to real estate investing. For me, it was the first time I'd, I'd been exposed to entrepreneurship as an option outside of starting a software or watching a product. Also the mindset of not thinking, and it's not bad to do this, but for us, it just exposed us to not thinking like an employee and yeah. thinking like a business owner. Uh, and that's also another book that he wrote called The Cash Flow Quadrant. I think that was like one of the first five books that I actually read um, was Rich Dad Poor Dad, or not read in my life, but like since I got no, into, life. into entrepreneurship. <laughs> um, and then I read Cash Flow Quadrant, and it kind of breaks down the different quadrants yeah. from an employee, a self-employed person, 
and then a business owner and an investor and explain the differences and the benefits to each one. So uh, the way that you get exposed to that is by reading these books. Yeah, and we're going to talk a lot about in some other episodes some of the principles Robert Kiyosaki and Rich Dad Poor Dad teaches because they're so powerful. They've helped us and they've helped more successful investors achieve their their goals and where their success that they're at today. Mm-hmm. Um, and so think think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill. That's another amazing book. We'll briefly just it it really just talks about mindset and accepting that you can be successful and wealthy if that's what you want. It, it be, starts mm-hmm. out with kind of the belief that you can. And I know that sounds very you know hocus pocus, but it's so important. The mindset's everything. And that's the foundation of, of, of anything you do, honestly. Yeah, it talks about limiting beliefs as well yep. and how those hold a lot of people back. Um, yep. And that's kind of like as a as an 18-year-old kid, that we, or we're still kids, but as an 18-year-old kid that wants to get into real estate, when I was reading that book, um, it just didn't feel real until I learned, okay, well, I don't feel like it's going to happen because of my limiting beliefs. So as soon as I read that book and I educated myself on how to think mm. and how my thoughts can actually get me to where I want to go, uh, then you can actually utilize those beliefs and those same thoughts yeah. and turn them into something positive. That's the thing about limiting beliefs is you just don't even realize sometimes that they're even there and that's why they're so mm-hmm. dangerous because if you're not aware of the limiting belief, then there's nothing you can do about it, you know? So sometimes when you are aware, it's okay, you're more conscious of it. So when it pops up in your head, you still might give into it, but yeah. at least you're, you know it's there, you know? Yeah. But I, I, that, I think that's why it's such a good book. It really opens your eyes to the, the way that you are your own and your biggest enemy. Not on the more practical side of things, uh, The ABCs of Real Estate Investing by Ken McElroy, mm. one of my favorite books um, when it comes to real estate, it honestly, it really encouraged us to think bigger. And yeah. it also explained the benefits of investing in larger assets like apartments over yeah. single family yeah. properties. It, 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 like it sounds like a book that's going to be about all types of real estate, and it, and it was, but um, it seemed like his, his focus is larger apartment complexes mm-hmm. now, uh, Ken McElroy, the author. And he talks about the property management side of, of things when it comes to managing those larger assets mm-hmm. and how important uh, how important of a role that these property management companies are playing when executing the business plan. And it just was one of the first books we read before we got into multifamily, yeah. and it helped us in so many ways understanding how important uh, your property management company is uh, to the success of your, of your property. So that was a book that we really liked. Um, another book that I read, there was a lot of them, honestly, The Compound Effect. Uh, the 5 a.m. club. Um, there was one, uh, uh, the monk that sold a monk that sold his Ferrari. All of those books really come down to mindset, and I think that's the most important thing uh, when you're first starting out is to develop that right mindset because you're going to come across all these failures, mm-hmm. all these obstacles, and it, it sounds like looking back, it sounds so like like you said, hocus pocus and. But honestly, this, yeah. I think it's because we've just, I mean, I'm not going to say we've been here in this industry forever, but we've had this mindset and been on this growth mindset journey for some time now that it seems like second nature to us in almost, mm. dare I say, common sense, but it wasn't back then. It was revolutionary. And I don't say that lightly. No one ever taught us that. No one ever showed us that we could think that way or, you know, I've never been exposed to that kind of thought process or those ideas. Yeah. I mean, just being an entrepreneur, you're literally taking risk every day. You're failing forward every yeah. day. Uh, but in school, you're kind of taught the opposite. So and that's not a bad thing. And we'll talk Maybe about it is, that but, in another yeah, yeah. episode. But like that, sure. that's why these books were so revolutionary for us. So we were. Yeah, exactly. And another book um, to kind of continue on that practical side of mm-hmm. things, because there's some mindset books, but there's also at real estate education specifically the best ever. And I want to make sure I get it right. Best ever apartment syndication book by Joe Fairless. That is the first book that we actually read when it came mm-hmm. to investing in apartments and raising capital from passive investors. It was so it was like a textbook. It's very dense, but it's it's every single line is very high value. It's a Practical, lot of actionable. gems in that book. We literally sat down and listened to the audiobook as I was typing out my notes. I was I, I just took notes. I had to pause, and it took us about three days about three days to read it. I believe it was three days. Yeah, Two yeah. Full we, days. we listened That's to all the we did. whole book, took notes, treated it like school, and then we came together and and. After we were all done, yeah. we then shared notes and kind of went over the highlights of it and then what we could take action on today. Uh, and that's exactly how we got into it. Um, <clears throat> and then another big resource, if you want to move on to yeah, the podcast ahead, ahead. section, um, we have our own podcast called The Real Estate Monopoly. Shameless you plug. Check out, yeah, shameless plug. Yeah. Um, but we also bring on a lot of other guests that have some amazing podcasts. And when we first started, we didn't start with our own podcast. We started listening to other people's podcasts. Yep. So some people that we like to listen to. Uh, even to net, to this day, or, or think multifamily. Yeah. Um, Mark Kenny and Tim Kenny have their own podcast. They bring on some amazing guests there. 
Uh, the Ken McElroy, it's the Real Estate Investing Strategies podcast, I believe. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Real Estate Guys radio show with Russell Gray and that Robert really Helms. Good. That's an awesome one. George Gammon has one called The Rebel Capitalist Show. Yeah, that's I really awesome. like that That's one. more that economic, yeah. macroeconomics, but it's really fascinating. I really recommend that one. Really high level. In general, though, oh, just another one that's really good mindset uh, on purpose, Jay Shetty. Mm -hmm. That's not really real estate related, but it's great for your mindset. Yeah, and Multifamily Takeoff, that's another good one. For, um, that yeah. we listen to for multifamily just to see what other operators are going through and what yeah. they're thinking about. So at one point, let's say you're educating. I, I want to kind of briefly explain yeah. what the educational stage should look like for us. There's no one, there's no one, there's no one way to do it. But for us, it was podcasts, books, networking. We did that for, I'll, I'll really, really focus on the multifamily transition. So once we decided we wanted to go into multifamily and I do want to clarify we were in the single family space for about a year before we moved into the multifamily space. And while there are some foundational things that we'd already learned because we had some experience in real estate, mm -hmm. it is still a different beast all beast altogether. Yeah. It's, it's a different industry. You have to learn it essentially from the ground up. And in a way there are some things you kind of have to unlearn and then relearn, you know, there yeah. are some, and we can get into the, the difference in another episode, but that's why we took a whole month of just education. So we would, we bought a, a course, I think it was about a thousand dollars. Right. Mm. And that was very, uh, courses. It was online videos. We listened to them, watched them. We listened to that best ever apartment syndication book by Joe Fairless. It was awesome. And we would talk to each other about the terms. I think we even had a Quizlet at some point and we were, yeah, I don't, did we really take 30 days? Yeah. We took about a month. Total. Yeah. So I, I think, like we, we took like at least two weeks. I know. And then we yeah, it was like take, uh, taking action on like cold, trying to cold call brokers. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't really going that well. We'll kind of go into that. Yeah, later, it was a month. But, it was a month of just education. And yeah. um, I don't expect anyone to do that. I just think it's important to have that, that stage or that phase of education. And we had a strict deadline. We said by this date, we have to take some form of action mm -hmm. because we understood the dangers of analysis paralysis. And we'd fallen into that when we first got into real estate. I mean, we'll talk about what that is. Yeah. But and to keep in mind, watch out for that. the reason that we like are so not against um, analysis paralysis, but you yeah. learn, you'll learn a lot more by doing it. So you just need to like equip yourself with just enough to survive. Exactly. And, and not fall flat on your face. You know? So uh -huh. analysis paralysis is essentially when you're in that education phase and you're learning, you're learning, but mm -hmm. you're almost getting overwhelmed with so much information and there's so much you don't know. And you're kind of starting to realize you're not really sure what to do. There's so many options you could pursue. And so you kind of get stuck and you'd never take action. And at the end of the day, if you don't take action, all the education you're doing is pointless because you're just going to be sitting in your head. You're not actually applying it. And you're honestly, we've learned that we learn, we've learned so much more by doing and on the go and from our own mistakes and the mistakes of our partners, uh, you know, in our, in our other investors when they share their own failures, but that comes from taking action because we were networking mm -hmm. to have that conversation. Yep. So just any form of action, I think will, once you have that foundational understanding of, of what you're doing in real estate, the, the actual taking action will be, will, will teach you a lot more. 100%. And that's why it's so important to not just remain in the educational phase yes, because exactly. you can always educate as you go too. Just keep that in mind. It's not, it's not like you stop learning. Um, you're always going to be looking at what the market's doing. You're always going to be doing different deals. You're yeah. going to learn a lot more by actually doing it, of course. Uh, but the education doesn't stop. Exactly. And the real estate guys, we, we love them. So that's why we keep kind of throwing them in there. But yeah. they have this thing that's uh, education for effective action. And we're big believers in that because, like I said, there's no point in learning it if you're never going to use it. And mm -hmm. it's so easy. I've met people on our journey that have been learning about real estate for five years, 10 years. And I know not everyone has the same situation. So a lot of people don't have the flexibility and maybe they just are interested in real estate and don't actually want to pursue it. But if you, if you seriously want to get into real estate and invest in it and build wealth and achieve your real estate goals, then you have to, at some point, take action. It can be scary. There's not, you're going to make some kind of, you're going to hit a bump in the road. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a wall. It's just, you have to expect it almost, but you have to take the action or else you're wait. The time is the most valuable thing you have. Don't waste it by just educating and never actually applying anything. Yeah. That's that I'll get off my soapbox. But <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, you know, I, I know that for us, having a mentor was very important and changed the game for us. And that is also taking a form of action because you're yeah. making an investment in your own education. Typically, if you're paying yeah. uh, what point. Well, let me back it up a little bit. How long we, we, we did a month. We, we took a month to educate. Jeffrey, do you think that that's a good timeline for people in, in general for for mm -hmm. I think it depends. Like for us with the multifamily space, like Herman mentioned, it was a completely different 
type of yeah. niche within real estate. So we had so much to learn. Uh, and that's why we were like, okay, we will, we want to make sure we understand it before we get mm -hmm. into it. And then we read the first book and that took us three days. And then we were like, okay, well, we'll set a deadline because we know we want to be very serious about it when we're actually mm -hmm. approaching these brokers. Um, so we need, we need to, we need to learn a lot. So we gave ourselves that timeline, but we were obviously doing this like all day. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think you don't need that much time, honestly. Yeah. You I mean, just it depends have to on your situation too. You just have to commit to podcasts for free. If you have, uh, mm -hmm. if you have a smartphone, if you have an iPhone, you can Apple podcasts, you just download them. Yeah. Audiobooks. You can find them for free if you want. Really. It's just about being intentional with the education and then giving yourself a deadline. I would say, you know, I mean, some people take six months. I've, I've heard that. And that's not crazy because especially yeah, if you're, if you're like using said, other people's money, it's just depending on how fast of a learner you are, how much time you have to dedicate to it. But I think it's important to set that deadline and have a deadline and stick to it. And then also map out what steps yeah. you should take to take action. Once you, that deadline arrives and yeah. we can talk about action steps towards the end of the, the episode. Now, like we said, having a mentor, it's a, honestly one of the most essential uh, steps we took that have, has really helped us. At what point should someone take, you know, go from the edu self education to finding and working with a mentor? Yeah, um, I think, well, I can only speak about why we did it when we did it. Mm -hmm. I think, like, because I think it just depends on everyone else, That's their true. situation, and what you think will help you get more uh, success. Yeah. For us, we always knew in the single family space, we had a mentor that helped us learn different strategies and it cut our learning curve and accelerated our, our, our success. Shout out Pace Morby. Yeah. So uh, we, we, when we had that mindset and we learned that in the single family space, mm -hmm. we applied the same strategy into in the multifamily space. Um, and we immediately, after the 30 days of learning, we realized that we were going to come across problems trying to find our own deal because we lacked the track record in this space. Yes, we yeah. had single family experience, but Brokers don't care, really. They, they're looking for people that they know can close. Uh, and obviously, investors are going to want to work with people that have experience. Yeah. We knew that was going to be an obstacle for us. So how do we overcome that? You partner in our, in our minds, we were like, we need to find someone that's going to actually partner with us on a deal. Uh, and they'll, they're going to allow us to not only leverage the track record, but they're going to do the deal with us so that we can ensure yeah. it goes well. Um, so that's exactly what we did. And that's why we ended up choosing the mentor that we chose. Absolutely. And I mentioned earlier... Then we will, we actually have an episode that we're going to release. I don't, yeah, it, it probably be already have been released by, by this episode. You can go watch that. It's about finding a mentor. If you want to learn more about how to get a mentor, there's free ways and paid ways. We've always pretty much paid for most of our mentors. We'll go into that yeah, later. Yeah, that's two thirds of them and we have three. So yeah, <laughs> well, pretty good ratio. Well, we paid in some form of, of value, which we'll talk about in that episode. Yeah. But also we mentioned the importance of networking and attending real estate conferences and all the benefits you can get out of that. Those are, our, we'll talk about that later as well, potentially in another episode. If you're interested, let us know uh, in the comments. But also, w w w at what point should someone, oops, my bad. Um, at what point should someone go from looking for a mentor, or sorry, educating, sorry, I'm going to cut that out. What point should someone go from educating to finding a mentor? Is that something they should do while they're educating, after they educate, what do you think? Yeah, so like I said, when we when we did it, um, we did it based on when we actually learned for 30 days. We then took action and realized we were going to face some obstacles, and how, we, we had to find a way to overcome them. Uh, we learned more by listening to more podcasts and actually looking for the answer to our, to our question, which was how do we overcome these obstacles, uh, which are lack of a track record, lack of experience, etc. And the way the answer was to find someone that's willing to partner with you, and in our eyes, that was a mentor. Yeah. So that's why we did it. For you, it could be I know, what? 30 days. I mean, it, I think it just depends. Yeah, it depends you know? on how fast you want to take action. I would say it should align around the time where you plan on taking action. So when the deadline of your educational period, I know, you know, because there's so many different options within real estate that if you're starting out and you know nothing about it, you don't want to get a mentor for flipping houses if you don't want to flip houses and you just might not know enough to make that decision yet. If you know you want to be a multifamily investor, you don't want to pay for a single family investing mentor, mm -hmm. you know, so you want to make sure. And I think that is a real practice. Like that's a real issue. A lot of people might have, you know, they just don't know enough and then they end up paying for a mentorship. And then w once they've paid for the mentorship, that's when they realize, oh, I actually don't even like this. Yeah, that's a good point. Also, uh, I think you can maximize your return on the mentor if you're going to pay for it. If you are, are able to already understand mm -hmm. what you're doing and at least have like a fundamental understanding of the niche or the, whatever you're trying to do, if that's multifamily, then you understand how the deals are structured. You understand how to find deals. You understand what markets you want. That way you can hit the ground running with the mentor 
as soon as you are pretty much partnering with him or her. Um, yeah. That way you're not wasting your time having to like learn after you paid because then that's like you're just going to waste your not waste your time. But yeah. You're just going to not going to be able to utilize them as much as you could. Absolutely. And I, I also mentioned networking events. I want to just make sure I, I touch on this point that when you attend a networking event, you can go as early as you want. But for us, it made a big difference when we at least understood what the real estate terms were, phrases, just the language we had been we had exposure to it. Uh, when, I remember when I was first listening to apartment syndication podcasts, it was all going over my head. It was another language. I would space out and it was uncomfortable, uh, really uncomfortable to listen to that and not understand what they're saying. So I can only imagine how uncomfortable it would be to be in person and have, you know, hear these kind of conversations and they're being, they're very high level typically, mm -hmm. and you're not able to contribute or even ask the right questions. So big gold nugget that you could take away from this episode is listen to some podcasts before you attend networking events. You don't have to listen to tons and tons of hours of it, but just a few episodes, maybe even on the way to the event, just listen to some episodes. And then that way you can at least be an active listener at the, at the event and you don't have to know everything, but you can at least ask good questions, yeah. which I think that's a good tip for networking in general. You don't want to do the most of the talking anyway. Yeah. And, and then also maybe you can, find a way to bring them value and or hopefully vice versa mm -hmm. just based on you actually understanding what you're talking about. Yeah. It just all starts with understanding and having yeah. exposure to that. And that way it won't be as scary, you know, cause you've been yeah. not in the, in the room, but you've been around that kind of language. For sure. So starting to wrap it up, what is some ways that somebody can take action once they, they feel like they've done enough education? Yeah. I would say uh, if, if mentor, you know, the mentor route is the right option for yeah. you. Then uh, what we did was we went to biggerpockets.com and just looked up multifamily mentors or something like that. Yeah, uh, you can find a mentor, and we'll dive into the specifics of finding a mentor, but that's a good option. You can find a mentor. You can attend a conference. Mm -hmm. You can attend a local networking event, which is different from conferences. They're typically free in your area. You can start taking action in whatever yeah. form of investing you can that, go to that platforms looks like. Like social media, uh, Bigger Pockets, and start networking with people. Yeah. Just. Uh, asking like, Hey, who's in my area? Would you like to jump on a call? Yeah. Um, there's so many different things that will come out of networking. So if you want to, if you want to be a wholesaler, you can start cold calling people if you want, but if you want to be a multifamily investor, you can start reaching out to brokers in your area, building those relationships, reaching out to people in your network and seeing if they might be interested in, in investing people that you already have a relationship with things like that. It's just really small, but starting to get the word out, just getting comfortable in that situation. But it's really just about taking action. And this episode doesn't have to necessarily be about those specific action steps because there's so much resources, yeah, so many, things so many resources do. out there that you can learn that we really want to give advice that maybe you're not hearing in other places. And so if you guys have any questions about action steps to take, let us know down in the comment section below. Or if you have any questions at all about finding good mentors, what conferences we like to attend and what you might want to attend, what real estate niche you might be interested in and what are the pros and cons of that niche. Let us know all your questions down below or DM us on social media, Instagram at Donis brothers and other platforms. We're pretty much present on every platform. Yeah. And if you want to check out our podcast, it's the real, real estate monopoly. monopoly. Our website's www.donisinvestmentgroup.com. And then you can follow me at Jeffrey Donis on all platforms. And then you can follow Kerwin at, Donis Kerwin at gmail.com. No, that's my email. <laughs> Donis Kerwin at, but, at Donis Kerwin. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate and, it. And if time. you guys want to learn yeah. about the investor mistakes, common, common investor mistakes that a lot of investors make, you can visit our website, www.donisinvestmentgroup.com backslash playbook. It's just play and then the word book in one word.